Sincero Consulting presents your GMP Minute by Kevin Wall. The supplier risk assessment should determine if the supplier has control of its quality management system. This is part seven of eight in the video series. If you have not done so, download the free guide that goes with the video series so you can follow along. Click the subscribe icon in the lower right corner to subscribe to our channel. Having a quality system today is standard practice, but it is not enough. The quality system elements should be organized and fit together. The different system elements should be linked with respect to inputs and outputs. The supplier should have a mechanism to ensure ongoing compliance and improvement. The two things I look for are a system-based approach and a quality system that is demonstrated to be self-correcting and in control. In 1999, the FDA introduced the quality system inspection technique for medical devices. That was followed by a guidance on pharmaceutical quality systems in 2006. The quality system was broken down into six elements. In 2009, ICHQ-10 Pharmaceutical Quality System Guidance was approved. For two decades, FDA has moved toward a system approach to compliance. The pharmaceutical industry has adopted many quality system practices that had long been implemented for medical devices. These elements include quality manuals, quality objectives, management review, and corrective and preventative action, to name a few. Quality systems have become current with respect to CGMP. Contract manufacturing organizations should have mature systems in 2019. When assessing QMS risk, look for a state of control in the QMS as a whole. I specifically look for how the CMO has defined the quality system elements and how they are linked together. I challenge the interfaces of the system to ensure they work together. The easiest way to stress test the QMS is through Kappa and Change Control. The inputs and outputs of those systems touch most other QMS elements. Determine how easily records can be traced from one system to the next. Does a CAPA reference the nonconformance or complaint? Does the nonconformance link to the product hold system? Does it link to the change control? Does the change control reference applicable qualifications and validations? I like to pick a few problems and follow the trail through all of the systems. I particularly like having all the documents together to determine if the dates align and the rationales are consistent throughout. If necessary, I will trace the issue back to the original IQOQ documents and even the URS to see the complete picture. A bonus criterion for QMS risk assessment is determining if the CMO has a defined structure or plan for maintaining the quality system in compliance and implement improvements. One way to achieve ongoing compliance is to define system owners for each process. The system owner is responsible for ensuring the inputs, outputs, and linkages to other systems are adequately defined and executed. They are held accountable for their system and defend it during inspection. Now we will consider a couple of case studies that test the interactions between systems. Case study one, as part of your laboratory audit, you ask for the raw data that corresponds to a certificate of analysis a CMO recently sent. You notice the lab results had a retest associated with it. Further investigation reveals the firm does not have a retest procedure and a laboratory investigation was not conducted. All of the test methods were retested. On the retest, the original failing result passed and a result that originally passed failed. The COA contained the passing results from both tests and ignored the two sets of failing results. Pause the video and write down what you would ask next then restart the video. The company's deviation procedure requires QA to be notified, which didn't happen. 
The analytical validations for the methods were checked. One of the validations did not meet the lower concentration level acceptance criterion for accuracy, but was approved with the note stating the narrowed range was still acceptable. There were no records in the non-conforming or product hold logs recording the event. How do you record your conclusions on the risk assessment checklist? This case study represents a systemic failure of the laboratory control system. No OOS procedure was implemented or followed. QA was not notified of the problem and signed the COA without checking the raw data. The method qualification system failed to adequately assess a deviation to the acceptance criteria. The deviation procedure was not followed. The way the results were handled is extremely dangerous. The scorecard is rated deficient. The incident also impacts the quality unit checklist as well. It is marked deficient as well. Case study two. On the plant tour, you take note of purified water use points and ask to see the last three months of water results for the equipment cleaning use point. You are informed all of the data is available except that use point. The yearly report of water results does not have that use point included and neither does the sampling plan. The deep dive reviews revealed all of the other use points are defined and tested. What are your observations? Pause the video. This appears to be an isolated incident related to the water qualification. While serious, it is not enough to mark the company as deficient in qualification. The overall rating would depend on other QMS observations and especially any further observations associated with the qualification system. If the rest of the QMS checked out, then I would still rate the company acceptable with a major observation. You may be wondering why I presented the assessment of the QMS last in the six elements. It is not the least important. It is because I want to emphasize the importance of people in the trio of people, performance, and process. It is the people who define the process and execute it. If the people or performance are high risks, the overall risk rating is adversely impacted even if the QMS is compliant to regulation. Do you use the FDA-6 systems to organize your QMS? Tell us in the comments.